Hi, I'm Mark Randusky, Product Sales Manager for Lifting Device Products with Gorbel. We're here in this video to talk about the most advanced lifting device on the planet, the intelligent lifting device from Gorbel, the GeForce and EasyArm V-Series unit. And we hope you're as excited as we are about the new features, such as easier navigation through the handle menu, a brand new user interface, the Smart Connect user interface that actually connects to web browser without any need for third-party software, uh, much better serviceability, faster speed and response, and the new velocity control platform, which dedicates a processor exclusively to the motion of this product that makes it the fastest, smoothest, and most precise lifting device on the planet. So the exciting features of the VI VI Plus GeForce and EasyArm are the front panel display, first of all. The soft touch buttons on the display are very easy to press, so very easy on the hands, very good, easy for the operator. You also see uh, we have uh, four buttons, uh, one for the what we call float mode, which we'll talk about in a bit, and then you have the uh, scrolling buttons and the menu button for making settings and adjustments from the handle. Very easy, very intuitive, very user friendly. You also have the high resolution OLED display with nice visible, readable messages that come through for easy and good communication to the operator so they know what's going on at all times. Also, we have the LED indicator that tells you when you're in run mode or float mode or standby or if you're in e-stop condition. So a lot of good information up here. So another thing is we have the G360 collector and air swivel. So that allows you to move the G-Force up or down while rotating. This is important because when an operator is actually using this in an application, they tend to pick up and then uh, place, uh, pick up from where they're picking up, place it in the, at, the, at the load place point, and then turn in a full circle and come back. What you don't want to do is have this air coil or the uh, coil cord here uh, be getting tangled during that operation. So that, that is a very important feature and that's standard on all G-Forces and Easy Arms. You also see there's a new, uh, the new bumper here uh, absorbs uh, shock better than the previous one, easier on the fingers as we talked about before, and also is just a nice fresh look. Also, if you look up top here, you'll see the actuator has a fresh new look. We have aluminum anodized end caps that give it a rugged new appearance, uh, give the covers a little more durability and weight to them, and uh, everything is designed to be very, very serviceable. So one of the things that we've done is we, we moved all the electronics to one side. So the bigger cover of the G-Force has all the electronics. The shorter cover on the front has free, clear access to do wire rope changes, limit switches adjustments, and things like that. One hex key will uh, make the slack adjustment for you, so that's much easier as well. Also on the handle, you'll notice it says powered by velocity controls. So the velocity control platform is Gorbel's unique and proprietary uh, servo control system that uh, uses a dedicated motion processor uh, to handle all the smooth, uh, very smooth, very fast, precise motion of the handle. So when I grab onto this, there is a processor exclusively dedicated to that motion running the motor. Other features such as all the settings, different features, inputs and outputs, and the Smart Connect user interface application is on a separate processor. And we'll talk about those features in a bit. Uh, but that, what that does, because we split that processing power, we can dedicate all that processing power to the smoothness of the, uni the unit, which is the G-Force is known for worldwide, is our smooth, precise, fast motion that moves with the, that mimics the motion of the human body. So as you see, when I move this up or down, I simply grab the handle, I focus on moving my arm, and it melds with my, my body and moves with it. So I have the ability to move very fast, very slow, and a combination of the two. So I don't, I've got one lifting device that gives me all the precision and all the speed that I need for any application. Getting into some of this intelligence of the intelligent lifting device, this, this the, the most advanced intelligent lifting device in the world, which is all servo motor, servo powered. So what that means is you have a, a it's all electric, it's a servo control system with a servo motor. That is a robotic-like control system that, all, that can keep track of exactly where this unit is at any given point in the stroke. So with that ability, we have, it opens up a whole lot of options for the intelligence aspects of this product. So uh, I'll give you an example. So I have, we already talked about, we have all the speed. I can move this very, very quickly. This can move up to about 100 or 200 feet a minute uh, top speed. So I can have that, that ultimate speed, but I can also have the ability to slow down and have this kind of finesse when I set down. So, uh, but there is also the potential for human error. So say I'm not paying attention or an operator is not paying attention. They could potentially impact the part into 
into the work surface or into the machine or the assembly that they're assembling too. So to eliminate that, we can use that in the intelligence of that servo system. And what I can do is come in here and what I'll show you is setting a virtual limit uh, for a slowdown that will eliminate the potential for that product damage that we just demonstrated here. To do that, I'm gonna press this menu button and I'm going to uh, select the program mode. And once, I'm at, once I do that, I'm at the main level, the, the main menu level, the different menus. To get into this virtual limit menu, I press this button one time. Now I'm scrolling through the selections within the menu. And I'm gonna look for the lower slowdown. Now, uh, this is assuming that we are setting us just above the floor, and we'll show that in a second, how that looks, uh, but we're just showing you the navigation right now. So once I have my lower slowdown selected, I simply press this button one more time, and it actually confirms the selection and sets your lower slowdown at that point. So now we're gonna demonstrate the virtual slowdown that we just set. So what this is gonna do for me is, just like before I could potentially impact the floor at full speed by not paying attention, human errors in, in the mix, right? So uh, with this now, with a virtual slowdown set, I've used the intelligence of the Velocity Controls, the G-Force Intelligent Lifting Device, to set that virtual slowdown so that every time I hit that point, I cannot physically run this into the ground anymore. I've error-proofed my application, eliminated the potential for any product damage, and that will be a big uh, return on investment uh, calculation right there, especially if this part is a high dollar part. So now that we set that uh, the lower slowdown on the G-Force through the handle, I'll now show you how you can do the same thing and much more with our Smart Connect user interface. So the Smart Connect user interface I'm going to show you uh, connects uh, wirelessly through Wi-Fi, very secure connection. Uh, and what this is going to do is give you a, you don't need a third party piece of software, you just need a Wi-Fi connection and a, a Chrome browser on your computer and it will allow you to connect and visualize and, and interact with the unit. We're on the virtual limits uh, page of the Smart Connect user interface and I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna move the unit. You're gonna see how the CPU of the, the central processing unit of the G-Force is, is interpreting position. So basically that number is just an interpretation of position. So what I'm doing now is moving that unit up and down and you're seeing the actual change of position. So you'll see right down here is where my uh, lower slowdown is. That's the lower slowdown position. So if I wanted to, there are multiple other virtual limits you can set such as, and you see right here, the lower slowdown is enabled. That's one that we just set and demonstrated, but you can also have upper limits and lower limits. So you could do things like uh, upper limit, keep an operator with an ergonomic range, uh, keep from lifting higher than they need to to uh, uh, increase efficiency and lower tack time. You can do lower limits if you want to never go below a certain point, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can also do upper slowdown and upper resume, and that would be used to reduce the potential when you uh, bring a, uh, a slack wire rope into tension. You can actually do that slowly and then resume uh, the speed afterwards. But the way you do this on this user interface, I'll, I'll set an upper limit here, and uh, I just simply enable the upper limit, and then uh, the position where I'm at, you look at, you move the unit to the position where you want to be, and then you simply set the position. What it's gonna do is lock this position into this box, meaning that I set my virtual limit at that point. So that is now my upper limit, it's a hard upper limit, and, and you can put that any point in the stroke that you would like to. Um, so that's the way you set a virtual limit, and that's just one example of how clean and user-friendly the new Smart Connect user interface is. Uh, and again, no third-party software. You simply establish your Wi-Fi connection to the unit, you open up a web browser, and punch in the IP address, and you are connected. It's very, very seamless. So we talked a lot about the smooth response, precision, of, and, the, and the variable speed. So we've got all the precision, all the speed we need for handle mode. That gives you a lot of precision and speed. Uh, but when you need to get, a, a, say you're doing an assembly application or placing a part in a machining center or something like that, it's, it's very handy to have the uh, ability to have your hands on the part and control the part a little more directly than having your hands on the handle. That's where float mode comes in. And float mode is a different control mode. And what I will do is press this button right here. Whenever I press this button, it will go into float mode. My indicator turns blue, indicating I'm in float mode, and it tells you that on our, on our display. 
And what that allows me to do is now with fingertip force, have a very light hands-on part touch. So now if I'm actually doing an assembly, uh, uh, I have a very specific bolt pattern or some locating pins I need to hit in a machining center and an assembly application, it will allow me to go up or down with fingertip control and place that part exactly where I need to. Now another thing that might not be readily apparent in float mode, but is very a very critical thing is, I'm never actually impacting or, or uh, applying any more force to my work surface or my assembly and say in an assembly application that I'm pushing on with my finger. So imagine if you're putting two parts together and you've got a bolt pattern you, you need to hit and a gasket that you need to be careful of not damaging. If you were to put those two pieces together with a, a, a different type of device, like a chain hoist, um, you were to jog down and, and, and get on that bolt pattern, but not hit it quite right, and then unload the entire load of that, or the, the weight of that load onto your gasket, you could damage it if you weren't right in the, in the right position. With this float mode, however, when I press down and I go onto my bolt pattern, I hit that gasket, maybe it's not just right, it's only, it's only applying a few ounces of pressure, only as much as I'm pressing with my finger up or down. And then only when, now it gives me the opportunity to, opportunity to come back up, reposition and go back down in the exact place I need it to be. And then only when it's in place, I can grab my handle and go back into my handle mode, unload the part and then finish my assembly procedure. So that's where float mode is very important. Now what we'll show you uh, as well as how to switch between this mode of float mode, which is a manual mode, we call it, because you have to click the button every time to get in the float mode. And when I, what happens when I press that button is it just simply weighs the part. It, it, the, the CPU looks at the part, it says this is what it weighs, it equalizes that weight and it becomes weightless. So uh, sometimes, however, there are some applications where the operator may not want to press that button every time and we have a mode called auto float that we can use for that. What I can do is activate the auto float mode and I'll show you how to do it with the uh, front handle display. I'm gonna go into my menu by pressing and holding the menu button. I'm going to scroll to my uh, general settings. I'm gonna click on that to get into the menu. And I'm gonna scroll to the auto float mode setting. I'm gonna press the menu button one time. It comes up with the selection to enable the auto float mode and then I'll press it uh, one more time. And that's how we get to the auto float mode. Okay, so now that we're in auto float mode, the way that, remember before you had to press the button every time to get into float mode, that was our manual mode. When we're in auto float mode, every time I'm on the hand, I grab the handle and I let go and I break the, I break the beam here on the back of the handle. So there's a infrared beam uh, on the back of the handle, it's a safety feature. And when I break that beam, it actually transitions to my handle mode where I can move with my handle up or down. And then when I let go, it seamlessly transitions to float mode. So I don't have to press the button anymore. So you have your choice of either the manual mode or the auto float mode. And again, the same, uh, all the same important features of float mode, you get that fingertip force, easy hands-on control um, of the float mode. You simply don't have to uh, press the button every time to get in float mode. You simply let go of the handle and it automatically transitions to float mode. I showed you float mode, both the auto float and the what we call manual float. And the way you switch on the user interface is on the settings menu. So you, you go over here to my program menu and you click on this and you select your settings menu. That's how you get to this page. And then you scroll down to your float mode section. So uh, the, man, the activation here is either auto or manual. And that's the way I switch back and forth between manual, which means you press the button every time to get into float mode, or I can go into auto float, and that is where it seamlessly will transition between the handle mode and float mode uh, with, with when you're in auto float. So another screen uh, that I'm gonna show you is the IO configuration. That's IO stands for inputs and outputs. And that is another uh, key feature of this intelligent lifting device known as the g-force what inputs and outputs do for you is allow you to integrate with end defector tooling or external systems and you'll see here through this screen i can easily assign functions to my inputs or outputs so one of the things for example you could do is make your end defector tooling the grippers or the clamps the vacuums any, anything you might need to get a hold of your part you can actually control that uh, through uh, inputs and outputs you would use a solenoid air valve and then control that solenoid air valve for grip or release with these with this these inputs and outputs. So this is a we call anti drop clamp, um, or I'll, I'll do the anti drop clamp unclamp. So that input 
will actually, when I assign that function, I can feed a signal into that with a switch and simply tell the tell the unit I'm requesting for my end effector, my gripper, uh, that would be normally pneumatically operated through a solenoid air valve uh, to actually grip or release every time I press that. It'll, it'll switch back and forth between grip and release. And then on my output, I can do the same thing. And I, I give the output uh, to the, uh, the clamp unclamp signal. I give an output uh, to the solenoid air valve. Now what I do here is I teach my G-force uh, what the weight of only the tooling is without the load. And then when I connect to these inputs or outputs on the G-force, I would request an input, press my button, say I want to unclamp my part. If the G-force sees that the tooling is loaded, in, in other words, it's, there's a, a part uh, suspended in mid-air, it will not allow that part to uh, move or will not allow the end effector uh, to unclamp or ungrip that part to drop it, making it much safer. So you're using the intelligence of the G-Force itself, the velocity control platform, to control the tooling. So that's one example of what you could do, and this is how easy it is to set the input and output functions. Now the VI unit, which is what we're looking at here, is uh, simply has two inputs and two outputs. That's, our, that's the most popular unit that we sell, and this, this will handle most applications. So uh, in this unit, your inputs and outputs are accessible through this connector right here on the side of the handle. You, you would plug a cable in there, you have flying lead connections that you would take to a terminal uh, connection or a point of connection, and then you can feed that into sensors or switches or anything like that. And then uh, we'll, we can, through the user interface, we can set functions to those points. So uh, with the VI unit, you have two inputs and two outputs at the handle. The difference when you step up to the VI plus, you get a lot more input output functions. So if you have a lot of signals, you want to have check signals and different feedback signals going back and forth between your tooling or with external systems, you have more inputs and outputs available at the handle. And then you have, uh, actually with the VI unit, you only have uh, actual or, uh, inputs and outputs at the handle. With the VI plus, you also get um, inputs and outputs at the actuator, which hangs from the rail up above. And the reason that would be important to have is if you had an external, say, uh, control for a line conveyor that you wanted to uh, control through the G-force, if you were in a certain area or a certain height, you wanted the line conveyor to not advance. Uh, you could simply festoon uh, out through your cabling on the bridge and out, uh, out to your system, to your PLC or control for your line conveyor, and then you could land those wires in the inputs or outputs at the actuator. So for any external systems that are not part of the actual G-Force, such as end tooling, you would use the VI plus unit, and those are the inputs and the outputs that you could use to do that with. So uh, that, again, is all part of this intelligent lifting, uh, the most advanced lifting device on the planet, the new velocity controls, G-Force, and easier.